All right, hey guys, we are back with another update on the Ben Riley Carousel Bracelet Web Shooter Project. Just a quick recap, we have done 3D printed roller bearings in our first episode. In our second episode, uh, we developed this bracelet with a clasp mechanism that also has the roller bearings on it, a motor, and a belt that uh, sort of worked, sort of didn't work. Uh, last week for episode 3 I gave you an update on these guideways that I built and I couldn't figure out the belt still. I couldn't figure it out. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the drawing board. I have some pieces printed out here. I'm going to need to uh, remove some support material from these. You're going to see what idea I have come up with. All right, so this is the new cuff. Um, got two rows of bearings, so yeah. And basically, we've got three belts here. Um, this one is a big one, this one's a small one, and this one is a different size small one that's a tiny bit smaller. Now, a big difference with what I am doing, the motor, is not going on top of the belt anymore. It's actually going underneath. So this is actually the underside of the belt. And here is our new gear. It's a little bit bigger uh, so that the belt can slide over the motor. And you'll see that the belt has this sort of triangular prism running through the center of it that perfectly matches to this new gear shape. So the gear will not shift sideways, it stays on that track. All right, so we gotta put the motor on the gear, gotta put the uh, motor and gear on the bracelet, and then put the belt over it. Let me see how that works. I've gotta solder some wires to this too, that's also important.
Okay, so we got our gear motor with wires on it and um, can mount it right there. So you might be able to see where I'm going with this. But uh, yeah, let's um, put this motor bracket on and see what we can get. So, if I put this on my arm, I'd say it looks pretty good. Um, the clasps on the back tend to come apart a little bit, um, probably because I have this new kind of motor thing and I have it actually go a little bit inside of the wrist area. Um, it's not uncomfortable, it just kind of makes it a little bit more snug. So they, these, uh, these tend to come apart. So I could do with an uptuning of this mechanism. However, of course, once the belt is on, this won't matter too much. Um, I thought the motor would be a lot more bulky, but honestly, I really like the way it looks. It's kind of like embedded inside of the whole system. So, yeah, I, um, I'm really liking this. Right, and let's get some power running through. Yeah, I would say the motor system is probably good and it's a lot better probably to have the belt underneath so you're free to mount whatever you want on the, uh, on the actual belt. So you'll see this new belt system that I have. Uh, for instance, these are two links that will go together. Uh, I have it now, which is really good such that I can hook these together like that and it matches up pretty well. You can see the line right there. And so that's the kind of system that it uses. But I think the belt, two sides of the belt match up pretty well. Um, so yeah, and then these wrap around once more like that. And now it goes on the wrist. So let's do that. So basically what happened is I can't use electricity to move it. If I hook up the power, it doesn't move. Even if I go up to 12 volts, which this motor is definitely not rated for. The motor's okay, don't worry, it's fine guys. They do a safety factor on those things. Um, but I'm not recommending it. And the belt, as you can see, it moves, it stays in place. Um, what I can say this definitely is right now is something that you can mount stuff on onto your wrist and then manually move in and exchange it. Obviously, you take the motor out before you do that. But uh, yeah, it's it's um it's hard to move. So I don't think the motor is able to move it that much. And it's not too tight because you can see that it's bowing outwards and you can push it down. But what I think is going on is it's too tight for how thick it is. 
So basically, I think the belt needs to be much thinner. So let's uh, let's take it off and look at that. Also, one thing, it, it wasn't too hard to get this on my wrist, um, which was really nice. I can easily put it on. Maybe not easily, but uh, relatively simply. So, like I said, I think the belt needs to be thinner. By the way, the motor is fine. So, like I said, I think the belt needs to be thinner. And if you think about it, Look at this bending radius here. It's pretty big. Um, and it's not like there are any sharp corners in this geometry, but I do think that, you know, the amount of force, think about the amount of energy it takes to bend something, right? If you have something, something rigid, like, like say I wanted to bend these pliers, right? If I want to take these and bend these, that's going to take a lot of energy to do that. I don't have that in me, and obviously that motor doesn't have it in it. And so it's not just friction and tightness. I, th I really think that, you know, because this isn't a circular shape, um, it's changing. Like, obviously the bending radius over here is different than the bending radius over here. It's not the same all the way around like it would be if it was a circle. So, basically, I'm going to take this same belt design. I like the clasp. I like the profile here. I'm going to make it thinner or add ridges so that it's more flexible. And that might solve the problem. And uh, I will get that to you guys next time. All right, guys. So thank you guys for watching. And I want to give a special shout out to my patrons. My Mo, Jeff Zachary, Woodhurst, Green Ninja, The Arachnids, Christopher Jordan, Nicholas Sykes, Caleb Choice, and Spider Noah. Thank you guys so much. I wouldn't be able to do any of this without you. And uh, yeah, I think next week we are going to take a break from this project one more time. I'm going to keep working on the belt, but then I'll have that for you guys the week after, which might be Thanksgiving week. I'm not sure when this is going up. Uh, so I hope you guys are looking forward to that. Next week I'm going to be showing you guys how I'm going to be machining some web shooter canisters. If you want any of the STL files from this episode, feel free to check it out on my Patreon. Anybody who donates $5 a month or more has access to that.